Uh, Rabbi Yisai, uh, it's 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 part of our Erev uh, Pesach uh, Hilchos Pesach series Drasha, and 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 and, and, and Shtagin never stops. Even even now, when we're what, the whole Mishpacha, you have this chus of being with the Mishpacha in the in the trip all the way to uh, Flatbush and I'm with uh, the the Rebetzin, uh the Rebetzin, uh who's not a boss coin, which which was definitely not, which wasn't you know. What we were hoping for, but it's still Baruch Hashem. We made beautiful Peruvus. Look at Eli's in the car, and uh, so I just wanted to, to talk about um, the, the the Pesach Seder. So so let's begin, all right? So we're finally at the Seder. Everyone everyone's finally in their seats. We, we're done playing musical chairs, even if it's not live music, because the sphere, whatever, whatever, we're, we're we're there, and they they found the couple that went missing, the Rishon and Rishona couple. And gets he's in the bathroom, or maybe he's not. It doesn't really make a difference. But we're ready to start the seder. It's the, it's, it's, this is it, guys. This is finally we're. Fi- this is the moment we've been waiting for. So, the problem is the seder is very, very boring. We all know because it goes on forever. And either you, either you read it in in like the in Shakespearean English, which makes no sense, or you read it in Hebrew, which also makes no sense in most cases, at least people like me. So you, you usually don't know what the heck's going on, and even if you do, it's the same old thing, and it goes on forever and ever and ever, and you just, everyone has a million dollar tours, you have to share on the same stupid thing, like forever, like it, momish, sometimes I sit at the Seder and I wonder, is this inception? So, what do you do to keep yourself occupied, because you get so super boring? So, you could do drugs, if they're kosher of Pesach, obviously there's a head there, but you could also, there's different games with a lot of fun activities we were trying to come up with, to try to make it so that you can sort of like get everyone involved and make it sort of more labor deck, right? So, the reference and I were discussing, it's sort of like beer pong, but it's called cedar pong. What cedar pong is, is where you take the, you take the car, like the, if you have a potato or an egg, whatever you use for the car pass, whatever made a middle you, your family took from Germany, and you throw it onto the cedar plate. You try to get it in the middle. And sometimes it, it could give mommy a heart attack. It depends on if you have to be, you have to know your, you have to know your mishpacha. But that's a very fun game. It's Seder Pong, and, and, and everyone takes turns, and it can kind of keep you busy during the whole market so that you don't fall asleep or die. And there's also you have to you have to be very interactive. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of young little animals and children. Everyone's trying to focus, and you have to make it fun for the kids. It's not only it's not only for Tati, you know, to, to, to sort of relive what he went through in yeshiva. It's it's for everybody. So you have to make it. So yeah, so like what we do in my family is we always had. Like one person would dress up like like Bas Paro. I remember we went to the mall. We took a mannequin arm, and like one person would be Bas Paro the whole time, just like, just like sticking her hand in everyone's faces with with her little mannequin. That was so super funny. Remember my little brother? We he brought in um, a bunch of locusts, not real locusts, just a bunch of grasshoppers. So that didn't end very well. So like again, these are examples of times where it's not where you where you have to be careful. So you could you it, it's a very big minhag to dress up as Paro. But you shouldn't go all out dress up as Paro, like, all out. Obviously, like, you want to keep it appropriate. If you dress up as Paro and you come out and you're wearing the little Egyptian thing, you know, the, the little the, 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 the little kasonis with the big, like, little big hard shaitel, so that's okay. But if you start to, you know, like, sneak, sneak, sneak through the back downstairs and start to pee in weird places and you become bisexual, so you've taken Paro a little too far because the kids aren't going to understand if you become bisexual. So you have to also realize that there's going to be kids at the table. There's going to be little neshamas who are, you know, who we're not supposed to tell them, you know, how babies are made until the ichad room. So we have to be very, very careful about these things. Another thing that I've heard people do is uh, they, 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 they play a little baby Moshe game where they'll take a kid, the one who's the worst, the most annoying, and they'll put him in a basket and they'll put him in the, uh, they'll put him in the Hudson River. So what happens if you put the kid in there? They disappear and they're gone. You, you, you lose a kid. So you have to be careful not to do it to a kid you want to keep. Um, what other things were going over? Sorry, Dayaz. Yes. What other minhagim does your family, does your mishpacha have? I don't know about everyone else, but my mishpacha. You have a, your family has a mishpacha to always freak out that there's chamit somewhere. Of course. So. No, but everybody always says, Is this broken? Do you ever what? do that? What? Like Is with it? the matzah? Guess if it's broken. Never Not since 12th grade. Oh. Um, so, these are all fun activities, and I hope you'll all have enjoyed some of these ideas. And Mirza Hashem, we're going to pick up later, maybe even during his car ride, depending how boring the rabbits and gets. Alright, Shkayach.